technical no, problem. Okay. Bingo. But we never uploaded them. Okay. Then again, I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, so MLA documentation. Um, the, the real thing that you're doing when you do MLA documentation is you are paying an intellectual debt. An intellectual debt. What does that mean? An intellectual debt occurs when you cite somebody else's work. So when you cite somebody else's work, what that is, is it's the same thing that happens in rock music. A lot of people think that when you go to hear a rock band, what you're hearing is the sound of their amps. Like, here's a drum set. You think you're hearing the drummer play the cymbals, but you're not really hearing her hit the cymbal. What you're hearing is called sound reinforcement. What you're hearing is the PA system. Her cymbal is miked. Can you hear it coming out of that speaker? That's what you're hearing. That's called sound reinforcement. You do the same thing in your research paper. In other words, you make a point in your research paper. Your point. Whatever your point is. But then you want to reinforce that point. In rock music, that's called sound reinforcement. That is, you mic the cymbal or you mic the guitar amp. In writing a research paper, you use a secondary source. Your point is the primary source. But then that has to be reinforced with a secondary source. Right? The secondary source is then cited on the work cited page. Right? That's the sound reinforcement. And then that is introduced with a transition. A handy transition is accordingly, and that introduces the secondary source, that's your PA system, that reinforces your point. That is your statement by what? An authority. By an expert who backs up your point, who reinforces your point, who makes your audience believe that what you said is true. Once you have stated or introduced your expert, your secondary source, don't simply move on to your next point. Tell us how this expert then supports your point. In other words, comment on the expert. In other words, tell us how the expert supports your point. This is why law schools like English majors. Don't simply introduce the evidence. Don't simply tell us Dr. Jones in his expert testimony has stated that the stapler was more than heavy enough to constitute a murder weapon. Don't simply leave that testimony there and move on to your next point. Re-emphasize it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as expert testimony has shown, the stapler is more than sufficient to be a murder weapon. Re-emphasize your secondary source. And again, because you have used a secondary source, you have incurred, you have incurred what is known as intellectual debt. But here is the good news. Because you have quoted somebody, now you owe them. 
But here's the beautiful news. It's easily paid. How do you pay it? You pay them by correctly citing them in your works cited page. Don't you wish your visa bill worked the same way? Paid in full. No problemo. Simply go to citation machine at purdue.edu and you have paid it in full. And the other happy news, the works cited page is a numbered page and counts toward the total number of pages in the works cited page. Easy as can be. All right. So that, in a nutshell, is how you do the works cited page. All right. These are secondary sources. All right. They back up what you have to say. The chief secondary sources on this handout that you'll be looking at will be web pages, books, interviews, and YouTube um, uh, entries. All right and also lectures, speeches, and personal interviews. So that, in a nutshell, is how to do uh, secondary sources. Okay? All right, and see. All right. Good. I'm going to use that for some comedy.